Welcome back guys to part 2 of this tutorial. For you guys that haven't watched the part 1 of this awesome 3D text animation in DaVinci Resolve, I encourage you to watch part 1. You can find it by clicking in the card above. As a quick recap, in the first part we designed all three text layers of this animation and also we designed the background and we merged them all together in this note text and background note. But if you don't want to watch the first part, I will also make the DaVinci Resolve file available available on my Patreon page, which you can find it if you search for tech, video stack. I will make it available on this page, so you can just follow along or have the ready-made file. Now let's get back to DaVinci Resolve. In the second part, or part 2, we will continue completing the 3D scene by adding a camera and a renderer. Then we will add lights and we'll add some final effects and then finally the animations. So let's get started by adding a camera 3D note. We want to add it in this node, text and background node, because here we have all the 3D objects merged together in this node, so click this node, control space, camera 3D. We will also need to add a render 3D node, so click this node again, text and BG, control space, render 3D node. Now let's set the properties for these two nodes. For the camera node, I will change the angle of view and the focal length to these values. And I will also expand film back and change the aperture width and the aperture height. And now most importantly we need to position our camera so we do that by going in this transform tab and we change the values x y z in the translation tab and we will also change the y rotation so these are the values i use now we have the camera ready we need to set up the render quickly select the render 3d node in the camera in the drop down select camera 3d1 to select this camera here Next we change the render type to OpenGL, this makes sure that we use our graphic card and we use hardware acceleration to render our 3D scene. In the lighting tab, if you haven't expanded, just click here to expand it, enable lighting and shadows. And go to the image tab, just make sure that the depth is to set to default. Now finally we can bring the media out node. Bring it here and connect the render 3D node to this node. And now if I hit number 2 and view the media out in the right viewer, I have the final scene. As you can see the camera is not well positioned. Select camera, go to the transform tab and just change the X position, move it to the left. So we move the camera to be somewhere here. As you can see the background is not colored because we don't have any lights in this scene. So that's the next thing we are going to do. For this project I will add different kinds of lights like the point light, ambient light to lighten up all the scene and then we will add four spotlights just to add some colors to this project. So select text and BG. We need to put the lights in this node because we want the same lights to affect both the background and our text. If you would like the lights to affect only the text you would have added them in this node or if you want the lights to affect only the background you would add them in this node or after this node in a merge node and then the particular light would have affected only this part of the scene but we want the light to affect the whole scene that's why we add them in this node select text and background Control space, search for point light. Let me bring this to the left. And for the point light, we need to change the decay type to quadratic because this is the most realistic type of decay. The decay defines how strong the light will be based on the distance 
of the rays, of the light rays, the further away the light rays, the dimmer they will become. So this makes sure that the light rays are dependent on the distance. And we will change the decay ray to... And now the most important thing, go to the transform tab, change the position of this light, where the source of this point light will be positioned in our 3D scene. So we change the values for the X, Y and Z translation. As you can see, we have added some light. If I move it to the right, here is our point light. Let me undo this by hitting Ctrl Z and return back to the original position. Now we will add a directional light. So select this node again, Ctrl Space, search for directional light. And for the directional light, we will just change the intensity. And in the Transform tab, we will change the values for the X and Z position. And if I click this node and hit number one, we will see the whole scene with all the objects we are adding. So if I click this node, the point light is selected. If I click this node, the directional light is selected. So those are positioned, as you can see it in the left viewer. Next, we will go ahead and add an ambient light so that we can lighten the whole scene evenly. So that's the purpose of the ambient light. Click here, control space search for ambient light for the ambient light we will just change the intensity we don't have to change anything else for this project so click ambient light node go to the intensity and change it to 0 0.236 now we are done with these lights now we want to add those colors we will have four co different colors as the camera moves to the right so to, to achieve that effect we will use spotlights for different spotlights with different colors so let me just add them quickly select this node control space search for spotlight i would like to rename this f2 to rename it to sp1 or spotlight 1 now first we change the color of this spotlight i will edit these values here use saturation and value and we will change the decay type to quadratic. We will change the decay rate, the cone angle, the penumbra angle, and the drop off. And again, it is very important to change the position of the spotlight. So go to the transform tab and change the values for X, Y, and Z. Okay, now the as you can see the the spotlight doesn't have the effect I want. We need to raise the intensity a little bit, or we need to lower the decay rate so that it decays farther away. So if we lower it, you can see that the effect of the spotlight gets stronger. Maybe put 0.03 here. I think this is good. Now we need to add three more spotlights. I will copy this spotlight. Control C to copy, click outside of it, Control V to paste, F2 to rename, SP2 for Spotlight 2, connect it to this merge node. Now we go ahead and edit the settings. We, first we need to change the color. To make sure that you have selected the correct node, just see here, click here, and if you have this red outline, it means it is selected, or you can check it on this part by clicking here you will enable and disable that node and now we change the color we will change the decay rate and the cone angle penumbra angle and the drop off they remain the same as the previous spotlight now we go to the transform tab we just need to change the x value because we want to move that spotlight to the right And now the spotlight is added. I will go quickly and add two more spotlights because they are similar to the previous two spotlights. So I will just move post forward, change the color and add them in the scene.
And now I'm done with the spotlights. Let me just select the camera and move the X translation just to see those lights. Here's the third spotlight and the fourth one. Now let me just Ctrl Z to get back to the original position. Now we are done with this part. Now we will add some final effects and we will add them after the render 3D node because those are 2D effects and they cannot be added inside the 3D scene. After the render 3D node we move to the two-dimensional space so that's why we need to add those effects after the render 3D node. First of all we will add a chromatic aberration. The chromatic aberration is also called uh, chromatic distortion. It is a failure of a lens to focus all colors to the same point. It will just give us a cool effect which will make the scene look more realistic. To add the chromatic aberration, go to the effects library. If you have it closed, just click here, go to templates, tools, and drag this chromatic aberration. Bring it here. Now hold shift and move it in this link, in the link between the render and media out node. Hold shift, left mouse, bring it here. And when it turns blue, release your mouse. And now you can see that this node has been put between these two nodes. Now for the chromatic aberration we will change the settings. We will change the center X and Y and the chromatic aberration values. And now if I disable, just look on this viewer. If I disable and enable it, you will see the effect. After this node we will add the light rays, click to this node, control space, search for light rays. And now we edit this, the settings of this node. In the select output we leave it to final image, so we will affect the final image. The source of the rays we will affect only the brightest points or regions of this image or render. And now we need to define the source threshold. In the ray direction we will leave it from A location, we will change the X and Y position. In the appearance we will leave the ray drop off to soft, we will change the length, soften and brightness. So this changes the length of the rays, changes the soften factor and this changes the brightness of the rays. And in the composite type make sure it's set to add. And now we are done with the design of this. If I click here I move to single viewer we can see this the final result. And now the final part will be to animate the text first and then we will animate the camera to move from left to right. To animate the text we need to animate the front layer and the middle layer. So this only these two layers move to get that nice logo reveal effect. We will first start and animate the front layer. Go to frame 0. You can drag this timeline here or you can go here and type 0. We need to change only the set translation for the front layer. So we will add a keyframe here. Then I want to go to frame 40. If you're not sure that it's frame 40, just type it here and add a keyframe here. Now we go to frame 0 again. In the frame 0 and the Z value we type. And in frame 40 the value is minus 0.009. And now if I move it, here you can see that now a cool trick, because this is very processor intensive, it might cause your DaVinci Resolve to crash. Just for the preview I will right click here, disable high quality, disable motion blur and enable proxy. As you can see the quality is not the same, but it will help us to render this quickly and most importantly hopefully DaVinci Resolve won't crash. And one other thing we could do is to limit the render range you can do it here so we just want to render this animation from frame 0 to frame 60 so just type 60 here and now only this part of this animation is rendered if i hit play now we can see the front layer animated next we need to animate the middle layer select middle layer go to frame 0 add a keyframe in the z translation and add this value 
and now in frame 40 just make sure you're in frame 40 add a keyframe and type this value and now we have the animation but as you can see in this part the middle layer goes in front of the front layer we don't want that to fix that we go to the spline editor drag this to the left to make make it bigger make sure you select only the middle layer and front layer z offset click here to zoom in select all of these points and hit shift s to smooth if you hit t you will see the ease in and ease out values now we need to make a spline that looks like this if you're not sure what values i'm using you can check them here now if I select all of these points, well we can change this a little bit so that it goes here, maybe. This looks good. Let me play this animation and see if everything is as it should be. Well it looks fine. Finally we need to animate the camera so that it moves from the left to the right. Let me just close the spline editor first. We need to select the camera and now we will change the render range from frame 60 to the last frame of this animation. And the last frame is 899. Because the camera will start here in frame 60 and we'll end in the last frame of this animation. So in frame 60, just type it here to be, be more precise. Select another keyframe in the X translation, then go to the last frame, add the keyframe here and start moving the camera to the right by changing the X and moving the X slider to the right. Just move it all the way back after we pass all this text and maybe it should stop somewhere here if i just move this timeline you can see that the camera is moving the last thing we will add is go to the spline editor select camera and x offset hit here to zoom in we just need to deselect the middle and front layer we just want to work with the camera select both points shift s to smooth and now we just need to change the spline a little bit and again just check these values here to make sure what values i'm setting here so just bring this in to be in the same line with the upper spline point and this should be good now we are done with the whole animation i left out if you remember i had the davinci resolve logo here i won't show you how to do that i will leave that as a homework for you it's not very hard to achieve it you need to add some notes for that add the logo and turn it into 3d space and position it here but if you are stuck with that you can find the solution in my patreon page i will put the davinci resolve file here and also the solution to add the logo in this position hopefully this was useful to you i will be glad to see your results if you had any problems or issues or any questions just leave them in the comment section below if you like this video hit the like button and if you like more videos like this please consider subscribing to my channel i have a full playlist of other davinci resolve topics which you can access by clicking the card above i see you guys in the next video thank you for watching and bye